Доброго ранку, шановні пані та пане. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Greetings at the press center of UCMC. The topic of the first press briefing: myths and fears around the ratification of the Rome Statute. Our speakers are Alexandra Matvichuk, head of the Board of Center for the Civil Liberties, Oksana Pakalchuk, uh, Amnesty International uh, Ukraine, Dmitro Koval, senior legal advisor, Democracy Reporting International, and the lecturer at Naukma. Greetings to those who joined us in this hall and those who watch us online. Today, human rights defenders and scientists gathered in order to speak about myths and fears around the ratification of the Rome Statute. This was raised by a declaration that was made by General Prosecutor Ruslan Yerbashapka. He said about the intention of the power to ratify Roman st uh, Rome Statute and to, to end this uh, period of uh, ratification because uh, Ukraine signed it in 2000 and still didn't ratify it, first because of legal reasons, and now, starting 30th of uh, June, there, are, there is no legal um, reasons not to ratify. But now we have a new wave of public discussion, and we see constructive arguments and also fakes, and we should respond on them. And today's press conference will be dedicated to dismantling those myths around ratification of the Rome Statute. And of course, we believe that Ukraine should ratify Rome Statute not only because this is the requirement of the association agreement with the EU, but also because the Rome Statute is needed for Ukraine. With respect to all opinions, we would like to have these discussions, and our opponents should not use uh, uh, fake uh, arguments. They should not threaten Ukrainian citizens, mili m m uh, military men, and uh, 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 deputies. Uh, so we believe that uh, we have about 10 myths, and we would like to speak about them in more detail. I would like to give the floor to my colleague, Oksana Pokalchuk. Uh, thank you very much. We will start with the first myth, that is that the uh, ICC will start consideration of cases uh, uh, of Ukraine only after the ratification of Rome Statute. Uh, International uh, Criminal Court started the process that are needed for investigation of situation in Ukraine. These processes will be ongoing um, no matter whether Ukraine ratify it or not. In 2014 and 2015, Ukraine used the norms of the Rome Statute that allowed uh, to ask the International Criminal Court to consider the situation in Ukraine uh, and not to ratify without ratification. And the previous convocation of the Parliament and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs addressed the court uh, with the re request, and uh, at the moment, the ICC have jurisdiction concerning start of investigation of all possible situations that appeared in Ukraine starting Euromaidan and uh, till now. In 2014, the Verkhovna Rada of Ukraine addressed in the National Criminal Court to consider the situation in Ukraine uh, limited in time, so starting Euromaidan until uh, 22nd of uh, uh, February 2014, and the Verkhovna Rada also addressed the Supreme Court, uh, uh, also addressed the court in order to broaden time limit uh, not to end at this date. And uh, now ICC can consider any situation in Ukraine in the limit of its jurisdiction that happened after 22nd of uh, um, November. Um, uh, 2015. Now, this is preliminary examination. Uh, the court gathers information about the situation in Ukraine in the east and in Crimea and uh, considers the situation for interference and the start of investigation. It is worth noting that the court also uh, looks where the Ukrainian court system efficiently investigate and what the national court bring to responsibility those who are guilty in committing military crimes and crimes against humanity. 
International Criminal Court Act uh, in accordance with the principle of complementarity, and the, uh, they may interfere if uh, Ukrainian power doesn't do anything in order to bring uh, those who are, who are guilty to responsibility or are not able to do it for some objective reasons. For example, if the power covers some crimes or if objectively the access to non-controlled territories is uh, uh, preventing efficient and objective justice or investigation. And uh, I believe that this is the first myth that we dismantle, and we will be uh, open for questions then. Uh, next myth, uh, ICC will be interested even in minor crimes committed uh, in conflict. This is a widespread myth that ICC will consider all situations, even minor cases. But we should uh, say that ICC do not have jurisdiction concerning minor crimes, concerning the situation of armed conflict or persecution for political or other reasons. Uh, ICC focuses on four crimes. It's a crime against humanity, military crimes, genocide, and uh, the um, crime of aggression. So uh, this is massive crimes and widespread crimes. Uh, they should have one of uh, such traits as the systematic uh, nature, large scale, uh, they should be planned and other aspects. I won't go into legal details. Uh, I would like to bring an example. Let's imagine that one of the sides consciously used uh, chemical weapons against another side in such a way they destroy a peaceful population, a village that is nearby. And this is an extreme case. And we know that in Ukraine we do not have such cases. But this is a good example in order to show what crimes uh, are considered by ICC. Uh, ICC, uh, they consider the biggest, uh, most grave violations uh, of the uh, rules of war uh, that are envisaged by Geneva Conventions. And my uh, previous story may bring us to the next myth that uh, ICC will consider thousands uh, of cases of simple soldiers in Ukraine. If we uh, look at the example I brought, uh, simple soldiers, uh, they are unable to organize massive destruction of uh, villages, uh, population, and the use of chemical weapons. This is the highest level of command, including generals and the president. We understand that such actions, they should be planned beforehand. So this argument I cite, the examples that are brought in the comments on Facebook, our guys will be taken for investigation from the front line and to court hearings. And this is not correct, because uh, only those people would be brought to court, uh, those who ordered uh, these crimes. And uh, uh, this includes all the parties of the conflict, uh, whether they ratified uh, the Rome Statute or not. It's enough to say that the court uh, um, investigate uh, cases in Ukraine with consent of our party and the Russian side didn't ratify the statute. And this won't prevent the court to uh, consider the cases and uh, uh, to uh, try uh, officials, top officials from R uh, Russian Federation if ICC find uh, grounds that such illegal orders were made. In this context, I would like also to call on when we are speaking about ICC, we should look at the history. And a good example is the uh, uh, Al-Bashir case. Um, uh, there was an order of arrest uh, by ICC court. And, uh, uh, military crimes committed by the Sudanese army concerning peaceful population in the Sudanese uh, region of Darfur. And this uh, 
uh, would have made Al Bashir uh, non uh, leaving the country, and uh, if he appears in one of the countries of uh, ICC uh, jurisdiction, he will be arrested at once. And in uh, April this year, he was removed from his office, and now al-Bashir is hiding from justice. And I would like to state that this good example, uh, ICC is a powerful instrument, the prosecution of bloody dictators. And even if they hide in their countries or elsewhere, their lives become unbearable because they are just limited in opportunities to travel or to be active. And the uh, conclusion of the first part, I would like to say that when we think about ICC, I would like not only to think about military men, but also we should have an image of a bloody dictator that will be brought to responsibility for, uh, finally. Uh, I will continue the analysis of the myth. And next myth we selected, it was contracted in such a way uh, for the sixth year in a row, Ukraine is in war with the Russian Federation, and this is undeclared war. And. Uh, in opinion of those people who spread this myth, they say that uh, this was undeclared and uh, what our military men do, uh, they do it illegally and the uh, International Criminal Court will punish Ukrainian military men because they are armed and they defend Ukraine in this uh, unbearable, uh, undeclared war with Russia. So this myth is not logical. And I have a mic in my hand, and I can say that this is a bottle of water, or I keep a, a chair in my hand, uh, any object. But if people understand what mic is, they will say, no, Lesia, you have a mic in your hand. So we may call it TTO, may, we may call it uh, operation of joint forces, or we, we may call it uh, um, Ramashka operation, or kangaroo operation, no matter how we call it. If it meets a criteria of international law, and this conflict has uh, signs that show that we have a case of an armed conflict, there is no difference how we call it in our country. If you open any recommendations, any documents of international community concerning this issue, they refer to um, humanitarian, international humanitarian law and call on parties to adhere to it and uh, use the rhetoric uh, concerning the uh, military actions. Uh, so second, Ukraine, as many other countries, uh, uh, signed uh, this uh, um, document of the United Nations Organization, and uh, whether it is legal to defend the country uh, when it is attacked, yes, uh, this right is confirmed. Uh, the country has the right to defend itself if it is attacked by neighboring country or any other country, uh, non-dependent uh, of how uh, this country calls the self-defense. And the third thing. Some people do not believe us. They want uh, some documents uh, as a proof. You may open uh, report, uh, annual reports of uh, ICC, and uh, there is a uh, um, legal qualification of actions in Ukraine. In uh, uh, Crimea, this is armed conflict and continuous occupation committed by Russian Federation, and in the East. ICC studies the materials, and they see traces of international conflict and the internal domestic uh, armed conflict. And uh, I would like to assure you that uh, no one ever, and this is outside of common sense, uh, no one punishes military men for defending um, the country. If they have arms in their hands, no one will ever punish them. If the court, court, trial is fair, they won't be punished. And uh, this is a common sense. 
if a person doesn't know international humanitarian law, so they uh, just have wrong opinion about the situation. So after ratification of the Roman state, Rome stated, uh, the uh, Russian Federation will send fabricated materials to the uh, International Criminal Court. This is the next mess. So. Uh, they shouldn't uh, wait for ratification. And my colleague told us that according with two declarations, International Criminal Court, they consider the cases and uh, Russia may send any materials to ICC. That's why if you're afraid of this, yes, you may fear because your fears came true. But why we don't afraid? We are not afraid because uh, we hope that there will be a second stage of uh, investigation. The court uh, does it uh, itself. They are not obliged to take any descriptions uh, into account, any evidence. They may take or reject them in the result of uh, the procedure that is similar to national procedure of investigation, but has uh, more efficiency in its implementation. So even if Russia wants to fake the materials and send tons of materials to the court, this number of uh, falsified materials, um, the number of submissions, won't bring victory to Russia because uh, uh, ICC uh, collects evidence independently and analyzes them independently. Next, Ms. Criminal, uh, International Criminal Court uh, will take cases from Ukraine that it started to investigate. And here it is important to say that International Criminal Court, as an instance, it was invented in order not uh, to be needed. It is like a sword that is hanging over the country to show that if the country uh, does not uh, carry out investigation itself, not just ordinary cases, uh, killings or kidnappings, tortures or rapes, uh, uh, only those cases that correspond the criteria of uh, um, criminal crimes and crimes against humanity, if the state won't investigate uh, such crimes, then international court will interfere. So it means that no one will take cases from Ukraine. If Ukraine carries out efficient investigation itself, ICC won't intervene. But in those cases where Ukraine objectively cannot uh, carry out investigation, and we're interested in uh, occupied territories of Crimea and Donbas, Evidently, Ukrainian investigators cannot, uh, cannot do anything there. So we need help of International Criminal Court. And uh, in this case, we really hope for help of ICC. Now I give the floor to Dmitro Koval. Thank you, Alexandra. So uh, there are three in other myths. Every of us voice out three myths. Mm, the first mess out of three, the uh, uh, ICC's investigation into the crimes in Georgia makes Georgia uh, bring in the most part of responsibility for what happened in its territory. The successfulness of uh, the uh, a Rome statute, it will be, the miss will be uh, successful if it is at least uh, at least a little bit based on reality. The same concerns the international treaties uh, uh, regulate in international relations. Here, there is uh, a seed of sense. Uh, there is a couple, uh, a bit of sense. Uh, ICC focused on uh, the issue whether Georgia at the national level uh, really uh, uh, pays enough attention to investigating the crimes, but uh, ICC also uh, formulated, uh, articulated clearly that the research investigation into um, uh, humanity crimes and war crimes uh, 
does not uh, uh, interfere with the prosecutor uh, to investigate those crimes uh, committed by Russian military mm, servicemen. And the focus on Georgia is also due to investigation of uh, 500 uh, uh, cases where um, uh, Russian uh, citizens uh, uh, were accused of uh, persecuting Georgian soldiers. Uh, but uh, for a long time, any simulation, any fake becomes obvious. In Georgian uh, case, Georgia uh, has uh, submitted the letter uh, saying that Georgia is now not investigating. It has stopped investigations in these 500 cases. Uh, because uh, this uh, principle of complementarity, uh, it uh, uh, supports that when other cases uh, are investigated, uh, ICC uh, could not investigate. Now it can. Uh, so. Uh, not in analytical part, not in the conclusions. Uh, there are no obstacles for investigation. Maybe um, now the next second myth, it uh, said that the USA does not uh, cooperate with the ICC because it does not believe in its independence. But not only uh, USA uh, is a party of such myths, uh, other countries such as Russia, China, and Israel also. Uh, it is important uh, to Mm, state uh, the distinctive feature of these four countries. Uh, this is the fact that any part of these four countries uh, is uh, occupied. No part of these countries is occupied. So uh, in Ukraine, we have two parts of territory occupied, Crimea and Donbass and Lugansk region territories. As to the USA uh, directly, the story of the USA is the story of love between ICC and the USA, and it is quite controversial. It started with uh, signing the Rome Statute. Uh, at uh, the time of Bill Clinton presidency, but in 2001, the, the conflict started uh, in uh, Afghanistan and Iraq, and then the decision of the USA was born uh, to uh, withdraw this uh, signature under the Rome Statute. Statute. It was in the time of the President Bush. In the times of uh, Barack Obama's presidency, the vector changed again. There was no uh, re-signing because uh, uh, the U.S. policy usually is uh, uh, quite uh, consistent, but the cooperation with the ICC has in intensified in the sense of information exchange in, in particular which uh, um, the US uh, uh, secret services uh, uh, got they uh, sent information and also initiation of cases in the ICC uh, has in intensified uh, the Security Council of the uh, United Nations at least is when it is not against sending the case, submitting the case to the ICC, um, uh, then this voting is uh, um, of importance. And in cases of al-Bashir and Gaddafi, the U.S. Uh, uh, as a party of uh, the Security Council uh, supported uh, submitting the cases to the ICC. And, and Security Council is the um, 
body which responds to genocides, crimes against humanity and war crimes. Now we have a new era in uh, uh, the U.S. policy. It is Republican policy, so it is a little bit of a, a rollback in its policy. Uh, f f for example, the U.S. visas were not uh, given to the ICC judges, so it looks quite radical. But this is not the radical stand uh, which uh, Ukrainian politicians, some of Ukrainian politicians, uh, uh, declares when they state that uh, Ukraine should follow the U.S. Uh, position. Uh, but also the USA and Ukraine's positions uh, differ, and uh, in some situations, uh, even if it, uh, the guilty decision will not be um, uh, made, uh, the USA could be um, declared the aggressor country, but in Ukraine we are defending our territory, so we cannot be declared aggression, so it, it is no sense uh, to compare Ukraine in the, U in the USA. The other thing uh, is Ukraine needs to strive bringing uh, the criminals uh, to responsibility as to what crimes and the ICC can help in this case. So logically we can pass to the third myth, which could be stated as follows. If the ICC will uh, try to uh, bring to responsibility only several uh, nationals of the Russian Federation, then it would uh, have uh, no uh, importance for Ukraine. The situation can be when the ICC will be interested only in uh, some uh, nationals of the Russian Federation who will not leave uh, Russia uh, for life uh, and uh, who are not to be um, uh, given to other countries. But uh, the ICC and its principle of complementarity today are interpreted in terms of positive uh, complementarity. The ICC focuses not only whether the country is investigating war crimes, crimes against humanity, genocide, and uh, uh, crime of aggression, but it also uh, encourage this national uh, judiciary systems to investigate such crimes. Every time when the ICC ge gets submissions uh, from um, uh, advocates from Ukraine and from lawyers from Ukraine, they ask uh, Ukraine's uh, investigation uh, offices whether they investigate these crimes. Then um, it uh, appears and the ICC has more communication with us, uh, um, advocates, uh, uh, civil rights advocates, uh, than Ukrainian national prosecution bodies. And the ICC's interest uh, also uh, promotes, uh, encourages uh, international focus on uh, such cases and uh, brings and bringing uh, the uh, standards uh, uh, up to the international standards, uh, the standards of investigation and the prosecutors and and investigators, they get additional information and additional um, training and qualifications when they cooperate with the ICC uh, and so the 
ICC is not only um, cooperation with it, it's not only about uh, uh, issuing uh, guilty sentences. The efficiency of court if the principle of positive complementarity works 100%, it will allow to encourage national jurisdictions to investigate the cases. If several uh, top leaders of Russia are not pronounced guilty, uh, it is not a problem. This is a myth, and it should be dispelled. I am giving the floor to Alexandra Beck. Before uh, questions and answers round, we would like to finalize with one other um, position, which is not a myth, but uh, because uh, only reality can support it or not. Those uh, our opponents uh, who are distributing the myth then they uh, ask us at the end of discussion if we ratify the Rome Statute and we get uh, uh, more pluses than minuses because now we um, stated only the myth and we didn't talk about opportunities, there will be uh, more advantages of uh, impact on the investigations, focus on uh, of the uh, cases on those uh, um, cases which are interested for Ukraine, our opponents uh, tell us, give us guarantee that Mr. Putin will be proclaimed guilty. Uh, of course, nobody uh, in our world can give 100% guarantees of something, but Mr. Putin is afraid of ICC. Uh, once the prosecutor's office first time uh, stated uh, uh, the true uh, stated the situation and the true words uh, that is war in Crimea and uh, Russia has withdrawn uh, the signature under the Rome statute. It was made within two days. Russia treats the ICC quite seriously. Then I have the question to our opponents. If we have no 100% guarantees, does it mean that we should miss any chance? I think we should use the chances uh, uh, to bring to responsibility Mr. Putin but w there is no such court uh, which can give 100% guarantee. I think that Ukraine should use any opportunity, any chance to bring to responsibility, as Oksana said, this big fish. And we know in which country this big fish who initiated the war against Ukraine. Now we are ready to the round of questions and answers. Alexander Chabanenka, Institute of the Future. My question is uh, of several parts. The first part is how... Uh, Many people uh, were brought to responsibility for the time of ICC's uh, existence. This is a question to the level of efficiency of this court. I think your question uh, supposes binary uh, 
response this is not many the idea is not only in bringing to responsibility but in the principle of positive complementarity of making impact uh, on national justice systems i think this is very simplified the approach my uh, response will be not simplified the war of the russian federation has different dimensions it has the dimension of war actions and information the dimension which is huge and this information war is both on the territory of russia of ukraine and other european countries via their proxy agents and uh, journalists and russia tv and the political statesmen political documents resolutions of the council of europe or european union uh, could not defend uh, russia can say this is the uh, ideas of politicians it is important that there is a evaluation of the court saying that this is special international institution which is impartial and which has conducted impartial investigation and it says that Crimea is occupied and the Russian Federation is at war uh, against Ukraine and it adds to us uh, who are advocates for civil rights, fighting for the rights of Ukrainians and in international arena, these arguments are of importance and persuasive talking about even small cases of guilty verdicts. This is also because because of uh, such uh, special features, features uh, that this court focuses on leaders, on top figures of the countries. So, uh, despite of this uh, focus, it is very important that the court uh, provides arguments which will help Ukraine to win the informational war. I'd like to add, uh, your question seems to me correlating with one of the myths I voiced out. <laughs> you asked uh, the question, that is why we are giving you response. Uh, I'd like uh, to say that the myth about military servicemen, if uh, uh, there are many persons uh, uh, who will be uh, declared guilty, then the, uh, this would not be a myth that ICC can uh, bring Ukrainian soldiers to responsibility. Only top officials can be uh, figures in the cases of ICC. Uh, so talking about military men or military uh, leaders, this is the complicated process connected to various dimensions. Uh, so not quantity but quality is of importance. During the period of Rome, of the ICC existence, uh, uh, only three persons were brought to responsibility, one leader. Uh, no, this is raw information, uh, more than 20 persons. This is the information which I checked before. Uh, now I'm going to find the analytical report of Nadia Volkova. She investigated your article and uh, uh, she rejected. rejected your information. Your information is not right, which you state in your article. Lubango Bureau of Congo was uh, declared guilty. As to the aggression, the ICC, as you say, can investigate uh, 
the intervention of Russia to Crimea. Is this right? Look, we said that first Ukraine sent declaration, submitted declaration where it asked the ICC to investigate the events under its jurisdiction related to the occupation of Crimea and the hybrid war Donbass area. One of the myths is that uh, uh, we dispelled, we said that there are several uh, components of crime. Our colleagues uh, will uh, submit uh, several. I have a question about aggression, whether the court can investigate the aggression of Russia against Ukraine. I see Dmitro will uh, answer. If uh, the ICC will investigate the war crimes of Russia in Crimea, this will be big achievement of Ukraine as a result of this process because the resettlement of the population in Crimea, which is ongoing, this is an obvious war crime which should be re uh, re relevantly qualified. As there are 44, 44 persons who were the website of the ICC is the most uh, trustful uh, source. When the statute was signed by the first uh, signatory countries, uh, this uh, crime, crime of aggression, crime of aggression was not uh, uh, covered by the definition. The definition and elements of this crime uh, were not adopted. It was adopted in 2016 at the Kampala conference, and uh, they uh, became valid since 2018, but now uh, there's uh, only those countries which are about, uh, over 30, uh, they are subject to the amendments uh, adopted in Kampala. So Ukraine and Russia are uh, not uh, subject to the investigation into aggression, but uh, Article 7 and 8, they are crimes against humanity, such as resettlement of uh, population, uh, killings, uh, abductions, uh, and war crimes, they could be covered by the ICC jurisdiction. So, uh, the ICC uh, most probably to address these crimes. I have the third part of question as to the countries which uh, reject to ratify the Rome Statute. Such countries as Israel or India, they also reject signing because Israel uh, has conflicts and uh, attempts uh, to uh, ruin it as a state. And uh, uh, also India has uh, the conflict at its border. Thank you. It is obvious that Ukraine should uh, define why it wants to be a party uh, of the Rome Statute. We should say a few words. What for Ukraine needs ratification of the Rome Statute? Here we can start with some pragmatic targets. They will be more understandable or from the vector because joining the Rome Statute of the countries uh, which are not at war, which are very peaceful, this is their contribution to the peace all over the world. Uh, and uh, Ukraine's joining, Ukraine's uh, uh, becoming a party uh, uh, is also a contribution. Uh, the Rome Statute for Ukraine 
is may may be uh, the only possibility to uh, attempt uh, to investigate and to do our best to bring to responsibility those people uh, who make uh, this war possible and uh, this war crimes and uh, crimes against humanity commu committed during this year, well, during this years. In May. Uh, do you have any final remarks? I'd like to thank everyone who came to our event. Thank you to our colleague who asked questions. We are open for constructive discussion. This is an important historical decision to ratify the Rome Statute if it is adopted. We call on our opponents it is obvious that we need discussion. We need to discuss pluses and minuses, strengths and weaknesses, but uh, we call on our opponents uh, to voice out only true information, not fake. Thank you for the time. Thank you for the, your questions. Uh, I'd like uh, to call on people, on you, when we talk about ICC, about uh, ratification of the Rome Statute, about the strengths and weaknesses, please use the sources which are, are formal, such as the website of the International Criminal Court, many other formal sources. Uh, the they are official. Uh, do not use in your analytical reports the articles which are not uh, trustful, not reliable, but uh, because they could be fake inside. As soon as we get this fake information, we disseminate it. And the, today's conference is a result that the myth being disseminated about the Rome Statute, about the International Criminal Court, they are so vast in the information space that our voice, we hope, it will contribute to the true information uh, forming a real view, not fake view. Uh, so we are open for discussion and we will gladly answer your questions and we will disseminate information so that the ICC and the Rome Statute are more understandable. Uh, I would like to thank everyone who came to our event, uh, who listened to our visions about the myths and how to dispel them. I'd like to focus on one fact. This fact concerns the myths on two levels. The first level is uh, when some idea of the ICC is attacked directly, so, uh, for example, saying that ICC will bring every Ukrainian military man to responsibility and the second level when the myth is brought to some other discourse such as idea uh, of ratification uh, is questioned uh, because uh, uh, Israel or the USA do not want to um, ratify it. Where is the myth here? The myth is in that we are offered uh, uh, to distract attention uh, from the fact that the ICC in any case uh, has uh, enough powers to investigate these cases, these crimes, and the Ukraine cannot withdraw its uh, um, recognition of the Rome Statute. We have already recognized it. We have jurisdiction, uh, which the is contrary to the situation of India, Israel, or the, uh, which uh, have not recognized its jurisdiction. Uh, so these myths are used 
to form the political uh, discourse uh, to change it and to base it not on facts. Thank you very much. Thank you, dear speakers and guests. And uh, to those who watched us online, that's the end of our event. Thank you.